Chapter 17 The Taxi Two minutes later we were safely inside the taxi and cruising slowly down the bumpy track towards the road. My father was bursting with pride and excitement. He kept leaning forward and tapping Charlie Kinch on the shoulder and saying, How about it, Charlie? How about this for a haul? And Charlie kept glancing back pop-eyed at the huge bulging sacks. Cripes, man, he kept saying. How did you do it? Danny did it, my father said proudly. My son Danny is the champion of the world. Then Charlie said, I reckon pheasants is going to be a bit scarce up at Mr. Vic Hazel's opening day shoot tomorrow, eh, Willem? I imagine they are, Charlie, my father said. I imagine they are. All those fancy folk, old Charlie said, driving in from miles around in their big shiny cars, and there won't be a blinking bird anywhere for them to shoot. Charlie Kinch started chuckling and chortling so much he nearly drove off the track. Dad, I said, what on earth are you going to do with all those pheasants? Share them out among our friends, my father said. There's a dozen of them here for Charlie for a start. All right, Charlie? That suits me, Charlie said. Then there'll be a dozen for Doc Spencer, and another dozen for Enoch Samways. You don't mean Sergeant Samways, I gasped. Of course, my father said. Enoch Samways is one of my oldest friends. Ah, Enoch's a good boy, Charlie Kinch said. He's a lovely lad. Sergeant Enoch Samways, as I knew very well, was the village policeman. He was a huge plump man with a bristly black moustache, and he strode up and down our high street with the proud and measured tread of a man who knows he is in charge. The silver buttons on his uniform sparkled like diamonds, and the mere sight of him frightened me so much I used to cross over to the other side of the street whenever he approached. Enoch Samways likes a piece of roasted pheasant as much as the next man, my father said. I reckon he knows a thing or two about catching them as well, Charlie Kinch said. I was astounded, but I was also rather pleased because now that I knew the great Sergeant Samways was human like the rest of us, perhaps I wouldn't be so scared of him in the future. Are you going to share them out tonight, Dad? I asked. Not tonight, Danny, no. You must always walk home empty-handed after a poaching trip. You can never be sure Mr. Rabbits or one of his gang isn't waiting for you by the front door to see if you're carrying anything. Ah, but he's a crafty one, that Mr. Rabbits is, Charlie Kinch said. The best thing is to pour a pound of sugar in the petrol tank of his car. When he ain't looking, then he can't ever come snooping around your house later on. We always made sure to give the keepers a little sugar in their tanks before we went out on a poach. I'm surprised you didn't bother to do that, Willem, especially on a big job like this one. What does the sugar do? I asked. Blimey, it gums up the whole ruddy works, Charlie Kinch said. You've got to take the entire engine to pieces before it'll go again after it's had the sugar. Ain't that right, Willem? That's quite right, Charlie, my father said. We came off the bumpy track onto the main road and Charlie Kinch got the old taxi into top gear and headed for the village. Are you dumping these birds at Mrs Clipston's place tonight? He asked. Yes, my father told him. Drive straight to Mrs Clipston's. Why Mrs Clipston's? I asked. What's she got to do with it? Mrs Clipston delivers everyone's pheasants, my father said. Haven't I told you that? No, Dad, you haven't, I said aghast. I was now more stunned than ever. Mrs Grace Clipstone was the wife of the Reverend Lionel Clipstone, the local vicar. Always choose a respectable woman to deliver your pheasants, my father announced. That's correct, Charlie, isn't it? Aye, Mrs Clipstone's a right smart lady, Charlie said. I could hardly believe what they were saying. It was beginning to look as though just about everybody in the entire district was in on this poaching lark. The vicar is very fond of roasted pheasant for his dinner, my father said. Who isn't, Charlie Kinch said, and he started chuckling to himself all over again. We were driving through the village now, and I saw the street lamps were lit and the men were wandering home from the pubs, all full of beer. I saw Mr Snoddy, my headmaster, a bit wobbly on his feet and trying to let himself in secretly through the side door of his house, but what he didn't see was Mrs Snoddy's sharp, frosty face sticking out of the upstairs window watching him. You know something, Danny? My father said. We've done these birds a great kindness putting them to sleep in this nice painless way. They'd have had a nasty time of it tomorrow if we hadn't got them first. 
Rotten shots, most of them fellas are, Charlie Kinch said. At least half the birds finish up winged and wounded. The taxi turned left and swung in through the gates of the vicarage. There were no lights in the house and nobody met us. My father and I got out and dumped the pheasants in the coal shed at the rear. Then we said goodbye to Charlie Kinch and began to walk the two miles back to the filling station. <laughs>